Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about how you can add your own custom commands into the chat system from the marketplace. So, for the purpose of this video, we will be adding a command that clears everything inside of the chat. So, let me just give you a quick example. So, if I'm typing in a global, and say for whatever reason I want to clear all of the text, we will make a command where I can just type slash clear, and then press enter, and it'll clear everything in here. So, instead of saying unknown command, it'll say something like, um, chat cleared. Okay, so for this uh, video I will be just using the project. This is essentially what what uh, you will have in the download, so I'm just using the demo project that comes with the chat. This will still work um, the same if, you were, if you've already integrated it. Um, the purpose of this video isn't necessarily to show you how to clear the chat with the command, but rather to teach you the basics of creating your own commands. So, I will just using I will just be using a command that clears the chat as an example. So, before I can teach you how to add commands, you need to know how commands work. You need to know what my code does when you type in a command. So, let's just open up Notepad really quick. Trusty Notepad and let me just talk to you about how commands work. So every time you type a message into the chat and when you hit enter, essentially what happens is there's a function that pretty much checks your text to see if it has a command. It does that by checking for a slash in front of your text. Not necessarily a slash, but whatever your command symbol is. By default it will be a slash. Okay, so it checks for a slash to see if you're using a command. If you're not using a command, then it just sends your message that you typed. But if you are using a command, then it checks to see which command you were using. So, as an example, we have command. Okay, so you type slash and then your command. It will check this. It will check this text right here, and it'll compare that to all the list of commands we have. So. Say, for example, if that command is mute, execute code path for mute. Or ban, execute code path for ban. Okay, so that's essentially what it does. Now, let's say we have a command like, let's say we have a private message, or PM. This will do execute code path for PM. But if we have something like PM, PM will look like something like this. So slash PM, and then the username, the person we want to send it to. So um, username, and then the message. Okay. So if I want to send a PM to someone named hello. That doesn't make any sense. If I want to send a private message to John Doe, and I want to tell him, Hello, John. This is me. This is what it will look like. Okay, so we have first the command, then the user that we want to send it to, and then the message. So certain commands can take parameters, okay? This is parameter 1 the username, and this is parameter 2, the message. I actually have a, um, a spreadsheet that I can show you guys that talks about this a little bit more. So, yeah, we can see these here. Okay, so we've got command, and then the parameter 1, and then the parameter 2. Not all of these have the parameter 2. Only the private message has parameter 2. You can see these are actually color-coded. Okay, so for something like PM, we do slash PM, and then a space, or whatever the separator is. By default, it's a space. And then you do parameter 1, which is the username. And then you do parameter 2, which is the message. Here's just an example of how all these are used. Okay, so let's just talk about 
these parameters. So parameters are essentially what you use. It's essentially extra info that you pass into your command. So if we're going to add a command to clearly chat, we actually don't need any parameters. Well, we might want some. So let me give a quick example. Uh, let me just copy these down. Oops. Clear. And so parameter one. We don't have to have a parameter one if we don't want for clear. What we could do is we could do clear and then maybe the tab that we want to clear. That's something we could do. Completely optional. Um, again, using clear will just be an example to teach the basics of commands. Okay, and then say for example a uh, a sample usage might be clear global. So if we wanted to clear the global group, this is what we would type if we have this formatting. Okay, so that's essentially the the, the basics of it. Um, that's just kind of stuff you need to know in order to proceed with this. Um, and that will help you become independent so you don't have to uh, keep rewatching this to see what I do. So that's essentially how commands work. So let me just talk a little bit more. So essentially what it does again is it analyzes your message. Let's say your message is clear global. Okay, analyze your message. It says, okay, they're using a command. We found the command symbol. And then it says, then it finds the command we're using. So everything before this space is the command that we're using. So in this case, we're using the command clear. Everything here is parameter one. And then optionally, everything here would be parameter two. So separated by spaces. Um, currently, I don't have parameters three. Or I don't have things like parameter three, parameter four, just because those do, do seem a little bit unnecessary. Um, I may add those in the future, though. So um, I think we can probably get started. Um, I'll talk a little bit more. So right, so analyze this. It finds out that it checks what parameter one is, and then it checks for parameter two. And I actually store these in a variable. Okay, so it'll say. So it'll execute whatever it is for clear, and then it'll store parameter one. So we can do things based off of that, and then we'll also store parameter two. And it'll also store booleans like has parameter one, or has parameter two. Actually, I'm actually not sure if that's exactly what I named them. I'm not sure if I actually named them parameters. I believe I did. Yeah, I did. So. Right, so we've got some of these variables like has parameter one, uh, has parameter two, text without command, a couple of different things that we store. So over here, um, okay, so go into chat fl. It's just in here. This is the function, this get chat command. This is the function that does all the stuff for commands. So here's all the stuff that essentially analyzes what commands we're using, stores all of the variables, does all of that um, string logic, text logic. And then as you can see here, it branches out based on the commands we're using. Um, so I think we're ready to start working on the clear command. Uh, you can do some other command if you want. Um, for the sake of this thing, we will be doing the command named clear. It will be slash clear, and then parameter one will be tab to clear. Okay, so it'll look like this. So clear global, um, clear PMs, or just clear, you know, group name. So yeah, so I should actually probably change this to group name. Okay, so this is what we're going to be making. Um, I think we're ready to start. So let me just save this and close out of that. Okay, so the first thing we need to do in order to start on our command is we actually have an enum um, command returns that where we need to add in our command. So find that enum. It's in the enums folder and it's called command returns. These are essentially things we can return so that 
the chat system knows what command we're using. Okay, so after we send a message, we can do different things based on which command we're using. So, go ahead and add a new one. And we'll just call this clear chat. And I will move this underneath unban. Okay, so here we've got clear chat. Then we also have things like invalid, unsuccessful, unknown command that we use. So I'll talk about that a little bit later in this video. Yeah, so now that we have added clear chat, let's go ahead and save. And yeah, I think we're ready to start. So come into the chatfl blueprint function library. Go to the get chat command function. And you'll see we're in this blueprint. This blueprint has a ton of stuff for commands. So what you'll want to do is come to the come down here uh, to where we have this switch on string. You'll just want to zoom into here and go ahead and do add pin. Okay? And click up here in the details panel on pin names and change that case zero to clear. So just whatever the name of your command will be. So in my case it'll be clear. Um, case sensitivity doesn't matter unless you want it to, in which case you can check that box. But yeah, so just go ahead and name it clear, and yeah, we're going to do all the stuff. So this will be called if it detects that the command name is clear. Okay, so right, it'll go through your text and it'll look for this right here. If this equals clear, it'll execute this. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. So when we type in clear we need to make sure that they inputted all the correct information all right so they need to input clear not only clear but they also need to input the thing they want to the tab they want to clear so if they don't input everything if they just do clear we need to tell them that they're doing it wrong so we need to spit out a return message that pretty much says, hey, you need to input a tab or group. Um, I already do this for everything I already made, like mute. If you just type in slash mute, but you don't type in a username, it tells you that you need to type in a username. Right? And we can see that here. So, slash mute, and then just a space. It says you must enter a username. Okay, so we are going to first set it up so that they have to enter the tab or else it'll spit out a message just like this. So let's go ahead and you can actually look at some other commands to kind of see how those work. Um, but essentially what we want to check first is has parameter one. Okay, so we need to make sure that they entered the group name. Okay, so this purple here is parameter one. Okay, and like I said, the chat, this function already detects that. So from clear you can do a branch, then just connect up has parameter one. Okay. If has parameter one is false, then we need to spit out a return message. Okay. You'll see like if we have unknown command, then we just set new text. That's essentially what we need to do. So whatever we set this new text to is whatever will be spit out. So if has parameter one is false, we want to set new text to something. We can do something like you okay so you must enter a we can do you must enter a group to clear or a, a tab. I'll just do group slash tab to clear. Okay. And then we also need to set this command. So go ahead and do set command and set that to invalid unsuccessful because they didn't do the command correctly. Okay. And then that's pretty much all if they didn't type it in, if they didn't type in parameter one. So we can just connect this to the end way over here. Okay. Now let's actually go ahead and test that. Okay. So if we did this correctly, it should spit out, you must enter a group slash tab to clear. Now, if they do have parameter one, it will do nothing. Okay. 
So let's go ahead and test that. So we can do a slash clear. Okay, it says you must enter a group slash tab to clear. Okay, so we're already making progress. So if they do type in our parameter one, if they do type in the group, we want to do some other things. And I'm actually going to turn this new text into a variable. So I'm going to select all this and copy. And then in the command return, or customization return messages, I'll just make a new variable called, uh, what should I call it? I'll do no group entered. Actually, we already have something for if you need to type in a group. Um, what they called? Uh, no group entered. Yeah, so we already already have a thing for that. So you can just do no group entered, and then connect that up. Okay, so um, yeah, I guess we can just connect that up, and then it'll just spit out this. All right, but. So that's really all we need to do for if they don't type in a parameter 1. Now, if they do, on the other hand, type in the group, we essentially need to check to make sure that group exists. If it does not, we need to spit that out. So we pretty much need to say, the group you entered does not exist. So let's go ahead and check for that. So let's see what we did for join group. I like to use these as examples because it kind of helps speed things up. So, join group. Let's see what we did up there. Okay, we just looped through those. Okay. Okay, so if we typed in a group, if every if we typed in everything we need, then we're going to loop through the chat groups. Okay, so go ahead and grab this game instance chat groups variable. It's an array. This array holds all of the chat groups that the player has. So by default it's global and the PMs. Um, and then they can join or leave other groups. So what we're going to do is loop through, we're going to do a for each loop. And we're pretty much going to loop through each group and check to see if, actually we should be able to do contains item. Okay, no, no, sorry we can't because that's case sensitive. Um, so yeah, just go ahead and do a for each loop, and we're going to loop through each group and check to see whether or not the group matches the group we entered. So we're going to do array element equals case insensitive. You can have it be case sensitive if you want, but I don't recommend it. Okay, so we're going to check is the group equal to parameter one. Okay, so is the current is the group equal to the group we entered? Okay, and if so, go ahead and grab a branch. Okay, so if we found the group, then we want to set a variable so we can set found item. Okay, so set found item to true. Okay, so essentially what this does now is it loops through every group and checks to see whether or not the group matches the group that we entered to clear. Okay, and my bad, we actually need a for each loop with break. Sorry about that. It's for each loop with break. And just swap this out. Just uh, do that like so. Okay, so once we find the group we can go ahead and break the loop because we don't need, we already found the group, we don't need to loop to, through other groups and check. Okay, so now that we've, if, if found item is true, if we found the correct group, then we can go ahead and break this. So I'm just going to add a reroute node, then connect that up, add another reroute node. Okay, so once we find the group we're looking for, we're pretty much going to do that. And then at the end of the loop, we're pretty much going to say, did we find the group? You know, is did we do, did we find the item? So on completed, go ahead and grab a branch. And connect that up to found item. 
found item is a variable that you can use, um, boolean you can use to store whether or not you found something. It's pretty much just a temporary boolean for you to use. Okay, so if found item is true, we want to do something. Let's actually set up false first. So if found item is false, we know that the group that we entered, the group we're trying to clear, does not exist. So again, we can just spit out some error text like group does not exist. So same thing, we just want to set new text. If it's false, if we didn't find it, then we want to set new text and set the command to invalid unsuccessful. And what should we set new text to? We actually have a variable for that. So should be called group does not exist. Um, this one's for joining um, group does not exist. Okay, so I have I have things for if we're joining or leaving. I'm actually going to make a new one. So, go ahead and, oops, yeah. So I'll go ahead and make a new string. So I'll just do group does not exist for clearing. Okay, and this can just say the group that you're trying to clear does not exist. Okay. Need a space there. Okay, and so that's what we can set the new text to. So it'll spit this out if we didn't find the group. And then again we can just go to the end. Way over here. Yep. Actually, let's go ahead and connect these um, for organizational purposes. Okay, and I'll actually move these out so that we have more room. Okay, so, so far we have it set up for if they didn't enter a group or if the group is incorrect, so if the group doesn't exist. Okay, so let's actually go ahead and test these now. So I'll save and compile and play. And then let's try clear. Um, yeah, so let's try clear and then nothing. So you must enter a group name. Now let's try clear hub. That does not exist. Okay, we don't have that group. So it says the group that you were trying to clear does not exist. Now let's try to clear a group that does exist. So slash clear global. Um, let's see. Yeah, so the reason it spat that out, the reason that it... Um, okay, so let me just show you again. So clear global. Yeah, so something funny is happening. I know why. Um, so what we did here for the first one, we typed in a group that did not exist. For the second one here, we actually typed in global. The reason it still said it doesn't exist is that um, the variable did not get set to something else. So let me just show you what's going on. So essentially what happened is it set new text to this, and then the next time around it didn't set it at all. So the return message still said that it did not exist. Um, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Um, if not, you know, feel free to leave comments on this video. I'd be more than happy to answer those. Um, but yeah, so now we should probably get it set up so if the group does exist. Hmm. So if the group does exist, if we're, if everything's correct and, you know, we're trying to clear a, a real group, then we need to call a function to clear that group. So, hmm, how, how should we go about doing this? Um, I think we need to go in and make a function that we can call. Um, let's actually see what I did up here in leave group. Let's see, up here I called that chat system execute on owning client. Okay, so what we need to do to leave a group is well, let's go ahead and go into our widget. Now, let's actually make a function 
that will let us leave, or sorry, clear groups. So, yeah, let's go into our uh, ch chat widget and we'll make a function that we can call. So, go into blueprints. Um, should be in. No, it's not there. Yeah, it should be in chat main widget. Okay, so go into chat main widget, go into the graph, and go ahead and make a new function. Okay, and we can just call this clear group. Okay, and let's see what we have. Okay, and we want to input the group to clear. So, I'm going to make a new input and call that group, and this will be a string. Okay, and let's see. So that loops through there. Group. Okay, so clear group. Um, let me just check really quick. Chat switcher. Dialog box. Okay, so this should be fairly straightforward. So essentially what we need to do is we need to we pretty much need to say, okay, we have this group, but we don't want to know a group. We want to know which dialog box to clear. So let me just show you really quick. Oops, we need to compile because it's being dumb. Okay, so let me just kind of show you what we're aiming for. So, we're going to input a group into this function. We need to essentially convert the group and find which dialog box index. So, we pretty much need to find out which index. So, right, so this first group is index 0, second group is index 1. So, we pretty much need to loop through each group and find its index. Okay, so in chat main widget, we're pretty much going to loop through all the groups. So to do that, we can drag out chat system, and then just do chat group, or sorry, groups, um, get to joined groups. I think that's what we should do. Yeah, so get joined groups. Okay, so that's what we need to do. So we need to loop through all the joined groups. So for each loop with break, and we need to find its index. So we'll do the same thing we did in chat FL. Um, we'll pretty much check to see if it's the same. Okay, so from the array element, go ahead and do an equal equal case insensitive, and connect that up to group. Okay, and go ahead and do a branch. And then we pretty much need to know whether or not we found it, so we can create a new local variable, so found item. And also create a new, another one, so found index, which will be an integer. Okay, so if we did indeed find the group, we want to set found item to true. And then we want to break this loop, so I'm going to add a reroute node, connect that up like so, and add another reroute node, and then just quickly organize these. Okay, let's just do a little bit of organization really quick. Okay, so so now we know whether or not we found the item. Uh, something actually we need to do too is we need to set the found index. So once we find an item, we'll set the found index to the array index so that we can know exactly what the index of the group is, which you know is the whole thing we're trying to do. Okay, and then we can just connect that up, and it should look like this. Okay, um, let me actually drag these down here, and um, they'll be fine right there. Okay, so now when the thing is completed, once it loops through all the groups, we need to do a branch, and we need to check if we found the item. If we did, then we need to clear that thing. Otherwise, otherwise, let's go ahead and print string and do 
group. We'll do error group does not exist. Okay, this really should never be false. If it is, then it's pretty much an error on your end. So it's just kind of a safeguard I have. Um, because we'll always implement a valid group. Okay, so, okay, if that's false, we'll print that. But if it's true, then we need to clear all of the messages from that uh, tab, from that group. So, in order to clear everything, we need to, um, let's see, chat switcher. Yeah, so the chat switcher holds all of the chat boxes. So we pretty much need to get the chat switcher and do get child at and get child at the found index. Okay? And then we can cast that, or sorry, cast to chat dialog box. Okay? Hopefully this makes sense. Otherwise, you know, I'm more than happy to answer questions. Oops, I'll probably drag in another found index. Okay, so if we found the thing, then we're going to get the dialog box at the index of the group. And then we should be able to do clear. What What is it? Uh, children. Let's see, let's go into chat dialog box really quick. Component widgets. Chat scroll box. Okay, so we need to get chat scroll box. Get chat scroll box and then do clear children. Okay, so this is how we can clear the groups at that. Now this is how we can clear that group, okay? We're getting the child, we're getting the dialog thing at that index and then clearing the chat scroll box. Okay? And yeah, I think that's looking good so far. Now we just need to call this function. Okay. Um, oh, actually, one thing, one error we made. Um, so here you can see we're looking through all the joined groups. But in chat FL, we weren't looking through the joined groups. We were looking through every group in existence, which um, is bad. So we don't want to look through all the groups in existence. We only want to check... We only want to check to see if we're clearing a group that we're actually in, not just any of the groups out there, right? If we're not in a group, we shouldn't be able to clear it. So let's actually see what we have. I think I have, um, let's see, found chat system. Yeah, so you, you should be able to just drag out chat system and do get joined groups. Okay, that way we only search through the groups that we joined. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me actually... Let me see if I, like, use this somewhere. Um, Alright, yeah. So, so, yeah, we should be able to just do chat system and then get joined groups. Rather than just the all the groups in existence my bad there for putting the wrong thing. Okay, so now now all we really need to do is um, call this clear group function, and it should clear it. Um, so yeah, let's see how are we going to call this. So there's actually some replication. Um, so as many of you know, widgets do not replicate. So we can't directly call this, like we can't just do, we can't just directly call clear chat or clear group, okay? We have to clear it from the owning client because only the owning client knows about its existence. So what we need to do is we need to make a custom event that runs on owning client. And then the custom event will call that function. Okay, so go into chat system. Um, Go ahead and make a new custom event. So add custom event. Then we can just call this um, clear chat group on server. And we'll make a new input 
and this will be group and it will be a string and then replicates will be run on owning client and that will be reliable reliable is actually optional depending on if you you know want it to be reliable um, but yeah so when we do this we want to call that function so let's see what variables we have okay so it should be chat widget so grab chat widget and then do clear group okay and then we should just be able to clear group using the group as the input okay and then back in our chat fl you can just call clear clear chat group on server okay so so if we found the group if we're if everything is valid if everything's correct then we can do from chat system we can do clear chat group on server okay and the group that we can that we want to clear can just be parameter one okay let me just quickly organize this this looks like a mess right now Okay, so hopefully this all makes sense. Um, so yeah, um, it should be working right now, but the one thing we're missing, which is kind of optional, I mean, I've kind of, um, let's actually see, we have a note. Okay, yeah, so the one thing that's kind of optional is to have a return message. So after we clear it, we can say like chat has been cleared. Um, yeah, I think we should do that. And it'll actually, yeah, let's do that. Um, so yeah, we can just set new text to, let's make a new return message, so, chat has been cleared, and string, and then this can just say, the chat has been cleared, okay, so we can just set the new text to that. And then we can set the command to, hmm, let's set the command to clear chat, okay, because we did it successfully. Now, you're probably wondering what setting this command it does. So, we output this command, okay, so let me actually show you what happens depending on what our command is. So come into chat system and look up uh, here, send chat message on server. Here you can see all of the commands. Okay, so this checks, you know, it checks what command we're using. And then we can do different things based on the command. You know, I, I, for private message, I use something special because I don't want to send it to every player. Um, for mute, unmute, all of these, I do this because this right here um, this just shows it on the local player so like special messages like return messages so you can see push the message um, but don't display a username since the message is your return message so if we clear the chat we want to do what we did for every other pretty much every other command okay so we can save and compile and go back into chat FL and one thing we forgot is to connect this back up to the end. Okay, so we can just do that there. And everything should be working. Uh, I'm not completely sure, but let's go ahead and check. Make sure you save anything in case we get crashes. Sometimes when you do like certain things with widgets, it can cause crashes. I don't think we will, but it's just uh, good practice. So let's go ahead and test this out. Um, first let's spam global so we can try to clear it. And yeah, in case you're wondering why my player doesn't have a username, that's because I'm using the default project, the demo project, and in that I never set a username. Because I let you guys set your own usernames. Right, because you probably don't want... Well, yeah, just whatever. 
Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and try to clear global. See what happens. Oh, and it worked. But there's one complaint I have. The complaint is that we didn't get our return message. Right? It should be saying the chat has been cleared, which it's not. So uh, let's see why. Um, what I'm going to do to test this is I'm actually going to add a delay when we clear the chat. That way I can see if we ever add. Um, that way I can see whether or not we actually add the return message. So I'm just going to add a delay of like two. I'll do five seconds so you guys. I'll do ten. Okay, so this is just me debugging. You don't have to do this. Um, let's go ahead and spam that. Okay, and then I'll do slash clear global. And nope, no return message. The return message is actually blank. Um, let's actually go ahead and see why. That's probably something we should know. So, I'll be completely honest. I don't know why it did that. I I didn't pre-plan anything in this video. It's all completely live. Um, but yeah, so our return message is blank. Uh, let's let's go ahead and do a little bit of debugging. To see why. New message. Um, group. New group. Um, chat fail. Let's see. That is current group. Um, set current group to group. Yeah, sorry, you probably have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm just debugging, I'm trying to figure out why our return message is blank. Um, because we do set that correctly. Er, my bad. So uh, we do, we do set the new text. Maybe there's something wrong with our command. Maybe. Oh, oh man. Maybe I, I think I forgot one thing. Okay. So come to the very end here. Oh yeah, that's why. So at the very end, what we do here is. We pretty much apply the word sensor if we're using no command. Um, we need to connect this new text up to clear chat. Okay, that's all you need to do at the end. So you need to connect the new text up to whatever uh, command it is. And now, if we do that, it should work. So uh, let's go ahead and spam a bunch. And do slash clear and then global. So as you can see, it says the chat has been cleared. Um, one thing we did not test though is we need to um, let's go ahead and create a new group. So I'll do create group test and let's actually test something. So I'm going to spam test. Oops. Okay, and then I'll go back to global, and then in global I will do clear test. The chat has been cleared. Test. Okay, so there is one complaint I have now, something we should probably change, is we cleared test, but it showed the chat has been cleared in global. I want, what I want is I want it to say the chat has been cleared but not in global. I wanted to say it in test. I guess that's kind of personal preference because, you know, if I type it from global, then I might want to see it in global. But I want people to know why test is blank. So I kind of want to show the chat has been cleared, but instead in test. So yeah, what we're going to do is something that's pretty useful. Um, I do it for private messages, is we are going to redirect, and this is really cool, so we're going to redirect this return message to test, 
Okay, so we're going to redirect the return message to whatever chat we're clearing, which is really cool. It's yeah, it's something I had really a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun playing around with. So yeah, um, something you can do is you can redirect the message that will be sent. You can redirect it to whatever group you want. So I'll show you how to do that. So to redirect a message, literally all you have to do is set this current group variable. I kid you not, that's all you have to do. Is you have to set current group and it will redirect it to this group. By default, current group is the group that you're in. So like if I type something in global, then it's redirected to global. But if I set this current group, so if I redirect this, I can redirect this to parameter 1. Okay, so parameter 1. Okay, I can redirect that to parameter 1 and that'll work out just fine. And now it should display itself in clear, or in the new, in the tab that we're clearing. So, oh man, I'm kind of worried. I'm thinking that uh, capitalizations are going to be a problem. I don't know if the redirecting thing uses case. Let's see. So, let's go ahead and do create, uh, sorry, create group, and then hello okay and I'm just gonna spam hello okay and then in global I will do slash clear and then hello okay so it cleared it and it says the chat has been cleared it it really is that easy um, yeah that was fun so we just added a command that clears whatever tab we want and I think that's pretty cool so again just a very brief example of uh, how we can make our own commands okay so and you know if you want to learn more about commands feel free to uh, actually, something I did was you can click so in chat FL where everything happens for commands. Um, you can look at every single one of these variables, and they should have tooltips, right? So new text, the variable, the variable, this variable contains the message that will be sent. Um, let's see what else we did it for. I thought I did. Yeah, so I did tooltips for a lot of stuff like current group. The group that the current user is sending the message from. You can set this variable to a new value to redirect the message to another group for all users receiving it. An example of how this is used is that this variable is set to the value of group for PMs when the PM command is used to re redirect the private message to the PMs tab. Um, so yeah, I mean, I did a lot of, a good bit of documentation right I mean I commented all of these nodes right so for unban do we own the group did the player type in a username um, lots of really cool stuff and you know you know it's awesome if you guys can if you make a certain command and hey feel free to tell me about it I'm kind of interested to know what you guys make um, using this chat and actually something that um, Something that I have here in chat FL is come down here and there should be all these comments. These just kind of give a brief rundown of the chat system. So feel free to read them. Uh, you can just come down here, so read me first. Um, right, so you can just read the red one. It kind of just talks about what this function does. Um, to learn about creating your own commands, there's a detailed video in the support thread. That is this video, actually. I'm making it right now. Read me next, um, and yeah, it just kind of talks talks about this thing. Um, yeah, let's take a look, like as an example, the mute command. Just look at what I have here. It's really simple, right? And uh, yeah, but um, you know, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it. Uh, something that I would really like if you guys did is head over onto the support thread. So, 
Let me just show you that. Okay, so the support thread is here. So uh, you should be able to search um, in the marketplace. It's called Multiplayer Blueprint Chat System. So Multiplayer Blueprint Chat System. I also have it linked in the description. But it's just this support thread. There's gauging interest, which is old. I don't use that anymore. And then there's the support thread. Okay, and the support thread just pretty much has some Q&As. And then it pretty much just says if you have any questions or concerns that are not answered here, feel free to ask in the thread. Or, you know, if you want a really fast reply, um, you can expect to be replied to within, you know, 10 minutes if it's like daytime. Then add me on Skype. Um, my username, my forum username is my Skype uh, login. and Or you can just click here to add me. And you can just, you know, click here and it'll do all that cool stuff. Um, but yeah, so that was pretty much the basics of adding commands. Um, but yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you know, I mean, if you're enjoying my chat in general, I really encourage you to stop by and just leave me a rating. So, I mean, it's super easy. All you've got to do is go to the chat thing, the um, chat page on the marketplace. And all you have to do is up here, it says average rating. Right here it should say rate now. Okay, and then you just click that and give me however many stars you think it deserves. And then, hey, leave a comment if you want to. Right, so this person left a comment. So, yeah, comments are really helpful too. You know, if you have, you don't even have to have, you don't have to purchase this to leave a comment. If you want to, you can just, you know, stop by here, leave a comment asking me a question about it before you buy it. Um, well, I do prefer that you leave those comments in the support or, you know, talk to me on Skype. You can still leave comments on here if you have questions. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to sub, like, and comment, and thanks for watching.